This is the brand new Cine Zoom Lens for the DJI Ronin 4D camera system. In this video, we'll put this new lens through its paces against a worthy competitor. But first, let's see what this lens can actually do when we use it for skateboarding. So, hopefully you enjoyed that little skateboarding piece. I know you might be wondering, why would you choose skateboarding? Well, this is where the love of film for me started. But most importantly, it's a 17 to 28 mm lens, which is extremely usable for skateboarding or snowboarding. But we don't have mountains in Holland, so I stick to skateboarding. And I must be honest, I'm actually quite impressed. Because I could run after Jason and the footage was just perfectly still. Let's get the list of specs out of the way so you know exactly what this lens features and if it might be a good choice for you. The Cine Zoom lens goes from 17 to 28 mm and has a fixed aperture of 2.8 or T3 in cinema terms. The built-in servo zoom lets you zoom in and out using the on-camera controls. What's even more amazing is that it zooms internally, so rebalancing the gimbal is not necessary. And the minimum focus is about 20 centimeters on 17 mm and about 26 to 30 centimeters on 28 mm. The 520 gram magnesium alloy body of the lens makes it a great companion for the Ronin 4D. The weight makes balancing effortless. Also, it's a calibration-free lens, meaning you can start shooting straight away. It's such a strange camera. Feels like a like a chicken neck, you know? Anyway, I'm gonna put this aside. <laughs> Alright, so the focal length of 17 to 28 mil seems a little bit short. But to be honest, 17 mil is amazing for fast-paced action sport like ice skating, snowboarding, skateboarding, car chases, um, filming someone biking from the back of your car. All these weird angles, this you know, focal length just works really well for especially in comparison with that camera body. The 28 mil focal length is great for these wider portrait shots because you still get a lot of nice bokeh in the background. The 35 is a lot nicer for portraits because you get this shallower depth of field. It's just a bit prettier to the eye. And honestly, if I do portraits like, like, you know, properly focus on portraits, I'd probably go for a 50 mil anyways. As you can see, this lens is actually quite small and it's a lot lighter than the 16 to 35. The other thing which is really nice, this one zooms internally to some degree. So the front element is shifting front and back, but it is counterbalancing within the lens. So there's no balance shift going on. Whenever I zoom this one, you know, it sticks out a lot more and the weight shifts to the front a lot more, which can be problematic for gimbal work. Now the close focus of this lens is very close. There is a thing to say though, the autofocus system has a bit of a trouble finding these super close objects because many times the lighter system just sees the entire piece that you want to focus on as one, but maybe you want to focus on something that lays inside. So you need to use the manual focus option. Balancing the gimbal with this lens is extremely simple. It took me literally five or six seconds to do so because it is so well integrated into the system that it just feels as one piece. Whenever you want to balance this lens, however, which is a lot more front heavy, you need something like this. It is a counterweight that fits perfectly on the back of the gimbal. You get a couple screws with it so you can just mount it on there and it's super firm and it looks really nice. And that is enough to work with the uh, 16 to 35. And something that is also quite cool from using the Sony lens on the DJI 4D is that you can focus in the 4D itself. So that actually works the same as this one. However, I found that I did need to calibrate this one always, and I didn't really need to calibrate this one. Okay, enough chit chat. Let's get on with the side-by-side -side comparisons. Now, 
This is the rig that I used for these comparisons. It is in no way perfect because the shots are not exactly lined up, but it does the job for now. The Ronin 40 is pretty difficult to rig because it has these side handles and you kind of need them to zoom in and out and to focus. So this is the best I could think of. While we're at it, I also quickly want to show you how I corrected this footage in post because I wanted to get the most accurate results. So let's do that quickly as well. We take these two clips and as you can see, both clips have three notes only. The first one is an exposure note. The middle note is a white balance note. And the third one is my color space transform tool that goes from S-Log3 to Rec.709 and of course D-Log to Rec.709. I used the paint dropper tool on middle gray to get a nice white balance and I corrected the exposure with the primary tools to get a nice balanced image. For this test, I wanted to see what the flares looked like from the streetlights. So we took it out while walking the dog before going to bed. Now, honestly, I'm actually quite surprised because the lights are very natural looking. It's not super flary, and that's because this lens is actually super sharp. So for a lot of circumstances, this lens is great to use. I must say that at night, I had a little bit more trouble with autofocus, so I had to recalibrate the lens a couple times, but it worked in the end. During this test, I was really curious to see what happened when the sun hit directly into the lens. The Sony FX6 was put at the max ND, which is 2.1 ND or 128, and the Ronin had one stop of ND extra left over, but I wanted to keep them at the same level. One thing that really stood out was how soft the image got on the Sony, while the Ronin 4D was super sharp. There was a little bit of chromatic aberration in the tree branches, but overall it performed really well. In this clip, you can see something quite problematic for the Sony. At 128 ND, you can see that there's quite a lot of IR pollution happening in the frame, while the NDs from the Ronin actually look stunning. I can confirm that my shirt looks exactly the same on the image of the Ronin, but definitely does not look the same on the image of the Sony FX6. Now, throughout these tests, you probably noticed that some shots of the Ronin were not in focus. That's true. I did have some issues with autofocus, sometimes it worked, sometimes it just did not work. And I recalibrated the lens a couple times, I used auto calibration, manual calibration, but still there were some flaws here and there. So it is definitely not as reliable as the Sony, but it works quite well, especially considering it's a completely different system. In this test I wanted to see the flaring. Now I must be honest, it looks quite similar. The Sony maybe looks a little bit softer, but overall the shapes and the colors of the flare are quite similar. So in this test I wanted to see if there's any color shift happening when I put the Sony lens on the 4D. Again, this was color corrected exactly the same as I mentioned before. Now last but not least, a focus breathing test. This was shot on 28mm on both the Sony and the DJI lens. All right, now it's time to talk about my final thoughts on this lens. 
I think it's a very good deal. It's a great small lens, perfectly designed for the Ronin 4D and perhaps also for a drone that uses the same sensor. And I think for the price, which is right now 1,750 euros, it is great. Compare that to the 2,400 euros you pay for the 16 to 35 by Sony. So it's a great lens. Of course, it's a bit different than the Sony, but the characteristics and the way you would use this lens is probably the same. I guess that's it. If you want to download the clip that are used in this video to you know try out yourself to see which one you like best the download link is in the description below it's called grading footage i've got a lot of other packs from different cameras on there as well so go check it out with that being said thank you so much for watching really appreciate you guys being here especially if you watch it all the way to the end double thanks and we'll catch each other later Yeehaw!